From San Francisco's beautiful AT&T Park, Root Sports brings you Houston Astros baseball. It's the final game of the road trip that pits the Strohs against the Giants for their final meeting of the season. Today's game features Scott Feldman chucking against Giants righty Chris Heston. Hi everybody, Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum with you. It's been a rather lengthy road trip to this point. The Astros have gotten good pitching. And that doesn't come along unless you're getting the good defense, Blummer. Astros have played really solid defense and some spectacular. No, these guys are good on defense. We've been seeing it all year. Top three, I think, in all of the American League with that defensive uh, fielding percentage. But it's a credit to the pitchers who are pitching to contact. And it's good for pitchers to go out there and not worry about the strikeout. Pitch to contact. Let the defense do what they can do behind you. Well, you summed up the way Scott Feldman goes about his business. Scott goes out to the mound today, and he's been good in his last three starts despite all no decisions. Yeah, he's doing a great job, and they need this from Scott Feldman. Pitching at the back end of that rotation, doing a great job. We're seeing the velocity actually pick up for Scott Feldman, getting up to about 92 miles an hour. But that last start against Oakland, we saw a pretty good cutter. Did a good job of getting those ground balls. He's not going to strike out a lot of guys. Those three games, he got eight strikeouts. But the good number for me is that he's strikes and proof of that is he's only walking one batter per game so good signs for Scott Feldman moving, moving forward for the Astros hitters they'll face youngster Chris Heston who's been really good this year including a no hitter pitched well against the Astros early in the season yeah fantastic numbers you see that complete game one earned run in that ball game no walks 10 punch outs seems to be a typical thing when you go up against the Astros they're going to have a lot of punch outs these guys also have a chance to drive the ball out of the ballpark Lately, Chris Heston's been doing a good job of getting those left-handed hitters out. Fastball, curveball, slider, change-up combination. 27-year-old rookie is doing a good job this year. Coming up, Carlos Correa has proven time and time again that he's in an elite group of baseball's young players. But he's not above getting advice from the legends of the game. Julia discusses Carlos Correa's learning curve when we return.
two-game series with the Giants. You're looking at one of the great Giants right here, Orlando Cepeda, his statue just outside of the gates here at Willie Mays Plaza. Puerto Rican who spent seven seasons with the Giants, hitting 307, getting the National League Rookie of the Year back in 1958. And another Puerto Rican actually spent time right here at this very statue, Carlos Correa of the Houston Astros, the shortstop, very respectful of Cepeda, the first baseman, actually spent some time at his house, the two sharing a dinner and talking baseball. Can you imagine what these two are talking about? He's our Geico quote of the day, Carlos Correa, talking about the time that he shared with Cepeda, saying it was a great moment to get to talk to him and get to share some of his experiences, get some tips about hitting. I was thrilled to get invited to his house to have dinner with him at his table and to be able to learn from him. It was a great moment. I bring in Jeff Blum now, who will be calling the action from up in the booth. But 20 years old, Carlos Correa has a day off in San Francisco. And what does he do? He spends it with one of the greats in the game, Hall of Famer, Orlando Cepeda. What does that tell you about Carlos Correa? Well, we already know he's a freak. He, he can go out there. He's got six, seven tools. He could go ahead and add history to it, too. But that's one of the things as a player, as a, as a teammate of Carlos Correa, I think those guys appreciate. If you see a guy as young and as talented as he is going out there and making the extra effort to understand not only his own heritage, but the game of baseball. Orlando Cepeda, baby bull, rookie of the year, he said it. 1967, he wins the MVP. So the guy has made history in the game. But being Puerto Rican, Carlos Correa trying to reach into that heritage, understanding the culture of baseball in his country. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I actually talked to Alan Zinner before we came out here. And one of the things you try to do to rookies, you try and get them a little bit. You try and needle them, find out how gullible they are. Some of these guys haven't seen older movies. Some of these guys don't know what's going on during the game because they're talking to other guys. But Alan Zinter told me he tried to bust him in spring training. He said he saw him talking to another player, kind of goofing around, and he goes, Carlos, what's the count and who's up? Immediately, without looking, Carlos Correa knew who was hitting, what the count was, looked directly at Alan Zinter and said, I'm watching. He goes, I'm not going to miss a thing. So the kid's prepared. He knows what's going on. It just makes you love him even more. Yeah. Carlos Correa, obviously in awe of what Cepeda was able to do as a player back then, but we're watching we're watching Correa grow into a great player. I know he's got a long way to go at 20 years old, but rookie of, of the year here with, with Cepeda. Could we be looking at a rookie of the year type player in Carlos Correa? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, I mean, the 14 home runs, what he's doing defensively, that's one of the things that nobody ever expected. Not ever expected, but they probably advanced a little bit quicker on the defensive side. He's doing a great job. Offensively hitting three hole, 20 years old. He's putting up numbers that are beating guys that have been rookies all year long. So uh, I think the vote's done. Carlos Correa for me is the rookie of the year. Even here in this tough stretch for the Houston Astros, Carlos Correa continues to, to get his hits. There's not really ever a long stretch where Correa is struggling. How does he continue to do that? Um, and talking with Alan Zinner again, uh, preparation is key. You know, you can tell which guys are prepared. You can tell which guys uh, want to go into these situations and face these pitchers. Think about what he's doing. He's facing guys that he's never seen before. He's seen a lot of minor league pitching, watched a lot of these guys on tape, but now he's actually out here physically watching these guys and competing. But his preparation tells you that he's able to make those adjustments in-game. Because for me, it was hard enough. It took me two or three years to figure out how to adjust in-game. But you're seeing a young talent like Carlos Correa, pitch by pitch, at bat by at bat. You saw it last night with Madison Bumgarner. Bumgarner had A-plus stuff last night, punched out Carlos Correa the first two at-bats. Third at-bat, he hits a rocket. Unfortunately, Adrianza make, makes a good play on it, but he's making those adjustments. It's great to watch. Good stuff always from Blummer there. As he'll call the action from the booth, Carlos Correa will hit third for the Astros coming up. Astros trying to grab one for the Giants before they leave town on this long road trip. Don't go anywhere. First pitch is coming up pretty soon.
is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Big Time Bats, the Craig Biggio Louisville Slugger Hall of Fame bat is now available. Call Big Time Bats at 866-490-BATS or see it at BigTimeBats.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Coming up, one more game in San Francisco before the Astros can head back to the friendly confines of Minute Maid Park. And the flight home will be a happy one if the heavy hitters find their power stroke. Blummer and I are back for the lineups and first pitch next. Park here in San Francisco, California. The Giants picked up the win in last night's game. Madison Bumgarner really good against Scott Casimir as the Giants won it. Yellowwood bringing the lumber. And they're bringing it big time right now. Chatting about the fact that the Astros have been scoring a big percentage of their runs via the home run this year. And here on this road trip, that percentage has been rising, Blummer. Yeah, it has, but this shows you what this team is all about. We know they're going to strike out a lot, but we also know that hopefully if they do get a couple guys on, they're able to drive the ball out of the ballpark. They sit back and relax, unleash the fury when they have the opportunity. They've missed a couple pitches throughout this road trip. But A.J. Hinch, for me, is not a guy that's going to go out there and ask these guys to hit and run, bunt, move runners over. I think they understand the responsibility with guys on base is just to go out there, good, good pitch to drive. But uh, you talk to some of the coaches, maybe trying a little too hard to drive that ball out of the ballpark because they understand how hard it is for them to drive the ball out of the bar ballpark in these days, but also how much they rely on it. And it's tough to ask guys that hit a lot of home runs to start moving the ball around and do some of the little things. So they're sticking with their strength. Hopefully it comes back around. Today's Astros starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. We'll get that in just a moment as we're getting set for first pitch now Chris Heston on the hill for the Giants rookie pitcher against Jose Altuve and that first pitch a fastball in for a strike. Seventy three degrees here in San Francisco. We've got variable winds. Not much very calm here at the ballpark. Tough Sunfield in left field during day games. And some say maybe the toughest in all of Major League Baseball. That's Evan Gaddis out there today trying to deal with it for the Astros. Altuve stands in hitting an even 300. Here you see the flags coming right off the bay. 
if you veered left just a little bit there across the bay, right on into Oakland and the Coliseum. Slider. Altuve, did he get a piece or not? Posey will fire on down to first, and that'll be a strikeout. So apparently, no wood on that ball. Altuve swings and misses, and the first out of the ball game. And now the Astros starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Jose Altuve, followed by Preston Tucker in right. Shortstop is Carlos Correa. Jed Lowry, Colby Rasmus, and Evan Gaddis make up the middle in the bottom three. Luis Malbuena, Jason Castro, and Scott Feldman swings the stick. Preston Tucker will stand in did not play in last night's game as Heston misses away. Two fifty eight that batting average eleven dingers as Preston has had a solid season hits this ball very well but right at Crawford the shortstop he will show off that throwing arm. Ball stung off Tucker's good look. Chris Heston's numbers on the season. He's 27 years old. He is a rookie. Pitched in a couple games last year. Did you see what he did last time out against the Houston Astros? Did quite well. Complete game. Two hitter. Got a fastball around 90 miles an hour. Curveball. You saw him punch out Altuve with. Change up. It's a pretty good pitch to left handed hitters. About two outs. The base is empty for Carlos Correa. Struck out his first couple at bats last night against Baumgartner and then started to get it together. Jeff Blum was talking about that with Julia. How he then put it together, hit the ball very sharply that third at bat as he was thrown out by the second baseman. Now hits one sharply to shortstop. Crawford with the play and a one, two, three first inning for Heston. We played a half of scoreless baseball. the stadium and a lot of folks in the stadium they just continue to sell it out here in San Francisco Astros go down one two three in the first inning against Chris Heston and now for the Giants in the bottom of the first inning it's Nori Aoki in the top spot he's in left followed by Matt Duffy and Buster Posey one of the game's top hitters middle three in the order Hunter Pence Brandon Belt who belted a couple of home runs last night and Brandon Crawford and the bottom three Gregor Blanco Ari Adrianza and Chris Heston, the pitcher. Scott Feldman for the Houston Astros. We talked about his numbers earlier in the last three games, pitching quite well. Thought he pitched real well in Oakland. Kept his ball club in it. I'd like to turn those numbers around on the bottom here in San Francisco, but last time we saw him, the velocity kept around 92. It was pretty good. First pitch of fastball in for a strike. Right hand batters have hit 293 against Scott this year. Left handers at 272. Aoki did not play last night against the lefty Scott Casimir. 
Hasner took the lot loss in the game despite pitching well. Two earned runs against Scott last night, both on home runs, solo jobs by Brandon Belt. Grounded to short to his right and in is Correa to make the play on the run. And out number one, and you get the sense that Carlos Correa is not going to be beaten by anybody because of laying back at this point. In the outfield, Evan Gannis back out in left field. Colby Rasmus moves to center. Preston Tucker in right field. Jed Lowry and Carlos Correa on the left side. On the right, Jose Altuve is joined by Luis Valbuena. And behind the plate, Jason Castro back out there working with Scott Feldman. Third baseman Matt Duffy stands in. For Scott Feldman, he has pitched much better on the road this year than at home in terms of batting average against anyway 236 on the road 319 they've hit against him at home and yet the numbers go the other direction with ERA better than two runs better on the road for or rather at, at home for Scott Feldman as he gets his second out a couple of ground balls to shortstop and that brings up Buster Posey take a look back at that Play by Correa on Aoki's ground ball. And you know Aoki leading off has a little bit of speed. And Carlos Correa recognizing that was playing him a little bit to pull. That's why you see him charging in and backhanding, able to throw across his body. We know the arm strength is there. The scattering reports are there. I think that whole canna ground ball situation in the ninth inning kind of shocked us all with how well he ran. Let's make that clear on Scott. The ERA on the road, the better figure, 320 away from home Buster Posey hitting 332 had a hit last night drills one into right field kind of what we like about Carlos Correa that ability to sting the ball to all fields exactly what Buster Posey does I always felt that good hitters early on in games. There's nobody on right here. Not a big RBI situation. Obviously, Buster Posey wants to get on the board with that knock, but they always seem to have that ability. Just let the ball get deep, go the other way, get that base hit out of the way, start things off nicely on this day game. And when you hit the ball that sharply, you can drive it as well. But you've talked about right field is not easy to get over that wall. Hunter Pence at the plate. He's the cleanup man. Get a chance we're going to look at Super Mo brought to you by Mattress Firm and that's a fastball that maybe in a different situation with runners in scoring position he tries to drive out of the ballpark but right now just lets it get deep keeps those hands inside drives it the other way that was beautiful big swing and a foul back by Pence Scott Feldman pitched that first game on this road trip in Oakland the one the Astros won on the road trip. Scott took a no decision in it. Six good innings allowing just a couple of runs. And now gets in front. For Feldman this is his fifth start now since being activated from the DL. Originally went on the DL back in May that was the 29th. Had the knee issue and some surgery that followed, and a nice play by a fan who brought a glove here to our right. Yeah, Scott had a bit of that meniscus tear. Got that cleaned up. Hunter Pence took an 0 for 4 last night with a strikeout. Always a dangerous hitter. And for Feldman, since the return from the DL, 365 ERA in the four starts. Another big swing by Pence. Got away with one, might have been a little elevated. 
Hunter Pence is one of those guys that the stance, the swing may not dictate it, but he can get on top of some balls and tomahawk the crud out of them. How'd you feel about day games after night games this time of the year? Hated them. Now don't hedge. How did you feel? Hated them. Three count, three two count now, and that'll put Buster Posey on the move at first base. The only thing you appreciate about, appreciate about a day game like this is that it's getaway day, and you have a chance to get back into your home city at a relatively decent time. Here goes Posey in the air to right field. Preston Tucker will circle a bit and make the play, and that'll do it for the Giants. They get a hit and leave Posey. We played one scoreless baseball. Be social with Root Sports, and we will thank one lucky fan by giving them a better view of the game with a new 40-inch HD television. Just follow us on Twitter at Root Sports SW now through August 30th, and look for your chance to win. Visit RootSports.com for official rules. Astros will be heading back to Houston here after this game. Looking forward to getting home and then having a day off. Uh, just a really rough stretch for this team on this road trip going one and seven. They know they could have played better, but they also know they haven't played as bad as it seems on paper. Uh, you know, the run differential, not too, not too much different. Uh, really just not getting the big hit and pitching like we've talked about starting pitching has continued to be good so there is a lot of positive that this group can take uh, and just listening to them talk about it they think they're all handling well obviously very frustrated uh, but they think their mindset's right they know they can go out and win as quickly as today guys and turn this thing around Jed Lowry at the plate four five six for the Astros Lowry Rasmus and Gaddis and thank you Julia two balls and no strikes Chris Heston on the hill one of the better ground ball producers in the National League. And through the first no hitter of the season this year. 17th in the franchise for the Giants. Lowry puts it in the air. Center field Blanco is there and out number one. There's that beautiful ballpark. And the fans are just really getting into the yard. Colby Rasmus will stand into the box. Came so close to having one of the crucial swings of the year for the Astros. Big three run home run in that fourth and final game in Oakland a couple of days ago. And it just wasn't to be as the Oakland A's came back and beat the Astros. But at the time. Just a huge swing for the team. Three run dinger. Now there were a lot of guys in that dugout after Colby Rasmus's home run. They thought that was the one that was going to turn the tide for them. But they were just quickly disappointed with how fast that ninth 
bottom of the ninth inning unraveled for the Astros. See a lot of movement on that fastball. That maybe that the change. Mentioned that no hitter by Heston in June. And again, the 17th in the history of this, the Giants organization. It's got to be within that high strike zone area with that pitch. It had been 103 years since the Giants pitcher had thrown a no hitter. Giants rookie pitcher, rather. And now three and two the count. Heston even struck out 11 in that game. Christy Mathewson, one of the other rookies to have thrown a no hitter for these Giants, the Giants organization. Rasmus pops out, two outs as Evan Gaddis comes to the plate. Our pitching performance is powered by Kubota. This is what Ash has been talking about. Chris Heston going out there. That city field in New York, pretty good place to go out and do it. See a good run on that fastball. He's got that good changeup, breaking ball. But what a magical night in a magical city on a nice big stage for Chris Heston. 27 years old, he's no spring chicken, but to be able to go out there and do something like that in your rookie season is pretty special. Evan Gaddis at the plate, 238 batting average, over three lifetime against Heston. There is no high strike here this afternoon for Mike Estabrook. Ed Hickox is down at first. At second, Paul Nauert. Dana Demuth, the crew chief, at third. Chopper to short. Two big hops. Crawford has been busy. And a 1 2 3 second inning. Six in a row retired by Heston. Scoreless after an inning and a half. Bay Area. And we've got Jack in the Box. They're going to take us inside the box score. Looking at what Scott Feldman has done in those last three starts. For me, that cutter has been the real difference for him. Kind of mixes in there with that fastball, but he only throws that cutter around 86, 88 miles an hour. So it's nothing that's overly firm or going to really blow you up on velocity, but it's the amount of cut he has on that pitch that's able to get in guys' kitchens and get those ground balls. You see the ground ball rates going up. But I think he does a good job of setting that cutter up with that sinker away, keep the ball down, and then when guys get out there leaning, he blows them up. Sometimes it turns into a hit, though. Brandon Belt has turned into a very hot hitter here in the series. Two home runs last night. Starts things with a little flare job into left field on the first pitch of the second inning. So Belt aboard with a base hit. As it brings up Brandon Crawford and as Blummer talks about the ground balls Feldman got two of those in the first inning. A 
I'd be all right if you get a ground ball right here for a double play to prove our point. <laughs> well, that'll work. <laughs> the way Brandon Belt's been swinging, he could have thrown that thing anywhere. He's going to end up for a knock. Just keep it in the yard. <laughs> Brandon Crawford at the plate, the guy that leads the Giants in home runs. Over two lifetime against Feldman. Infield swings around a bit toward the right side. Not the shift per se these days, but a shifted infield. Belt held on by Val Buena at first. Good strong arm shortstop. Steady handed. And again, leading the Giants in home runs. A very good offensive club. Kind of unique to have that shortstop doing that. The Astros may be that club in the future. What a luxury having a guy like this hitting six for you. Kind of clean up that mess after a couple guys maybe get pitched around a little bit and Buster Posey and Brandon Belt. You can't take a nap on this guy. He'll turn on it. Next home run he hits will be number 20 on the season. Hits a center field and deep. Rasmus on the run at the track makes the catch. Going all the way to second base, Brandon Belt, he will return to first on out number one. So it stays in the yard, turns into an out, and that's all you need at the moment. Good place to let him hit it, try and drive it out there. We'll take a look at the strike zone. See where that location was. Brought to you by MD Anderson. Breaking ball staying away, but see it elevated a little bit. Two strike count. Guy might be looking for a fastball away. Crawford does a good job of getting his hands back, that foot down. And able to hold on just long enough to barrel it up pretty good. One out for the seven hitter. Center fielder Gregor Blanco. See the season numbers there on Blanco. Left hand hitter all the way. Belt will run occasionally. He's stolen five of seven this year. Pitch is fouled back. Got a special telecast going on along with ours and the Giants today. Major League Network, Major League Baseball Network. We've got a cast with a roundtable discussion focused on advanced metrics. That's presented by MLB now. And all kinds of numbers. 102 miles an hour. That ball came off the bat of Crawford. Those numbers mean much to you? The exit velocities? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like, I like, I like, I mean, the exit velocity is interesting to me just because you saw Brandon Bell hit a ball good. You know, how far did it jump off his bat? You know, you change the trajectory a little bit. Maybe it finds a gap or maybe even drives it out of the ballpark. But I think, it, you know, it's, I think they've actually narrowed it down pretty good to figure out, you know, what the exit velocity needs to be to get the ball out of the ballpark, which is, you know, for the casual fan is probably pretty interesting because that's not something you see on a daily broadcast. Full blown shift on in the infield now. I, I thought there was an interesting story up uh, with the New York Mets, and I think it involved Ike Davis and Lucas Duda. And the reason the Mets went with Lucas Duda is because his exit velocity was better and more consistent, so they stuck with him. So now it's being involved in some of the scouting and things like that. Behind drive down the left field side, and it drops foul. So some years ago, maybe just back a year ago, whatever. People were relying a lot of the time on just what it looked like to the eye of the baseball guy watching the ball come off a guy's bat. Do the numbers change what you see with your eye? What, what do you mean? 
Well, if you see a guy hitting, and do you already see a guy that has that hits the ball harder consistently? Well, well for the Astros, Carlos Correa, he was one of the guys when he first got called up. I mean, he was mashing baseballs at 105 miles an hour plus consistently. Runner goes from first. Pitch hit in the air to center field. Medium depth for Rasmus. And out number two. So Carlos Correa has these numbers, exit velocity, and I think we can both deduce that he's a pretty good hitter. He has a good eye, good eye-hand coordination, is able to get to the barrel to the baseball and create that exit velocity. So here's what I was trying to pose with the question. To my eye, and I imagine to your eye, you watch Carlos Correa hit the baseball, and generally speaking, you're going to say, well, this guy hits the ball harder than most of the other guys. That's that's my take on it. The only problem is, is that the for me is that, yeah, I can go down to a batting cage and go, oh my gosh, yeah, this guy's got electric bat speed. He's barreling up. The problem, it's 5:30 in the afternoon. A lot of these exit velocities that they're picking up these days are in-game exit velocities, and that's what I appreciate about them. These are guys that are going out and doing it at a major league baseball game at seven o'clock. Two outs. As the breaking ball finds the strike zone. Ere Adrian's at the plate. Because I think both you and I, I know what you're talking about. Those guys that step in the cage and you, and you hear it. You know, there's a certain sound these guys can create when they connect with the baseball. And you kind of turn your head and you look and you're like, wow. But now you get this chance to see that expectation put on them during a game. And then you get to see the result. And I think we see that during the games too. I just wonder, do the numbers ever surprise where you look at a guy and you think, gee, I didn't realize he was hitting the ball that hard. I'm sure that happens. Adrian's the eight hitter for the Giants. There goes Belt as the pitch is fouled off. So that's the second time Belt has been in motion here. I wonder if they're picking up on something. Belt not a burner out there, but if he's a guy that can peek in and see Castro's signs and maybe get it, realize he's got a breaking ball pitch coming that he can get a good jump on. Or maybe they're just trying to create some movement in the infield to create even more holes for Adrianza. One and two the count. And again, Belt on the move. Pitch in the dirt. Scoots by Castro. It'll be a stolen base for Belt. And now with two outs and a 2-2 count, Belt in scoring position for Adrianza. It might be one of those situations, too, with two outs. Go ahead and take the chance. You get thrown out at second base. Adrianza leads off the next inning. If you make it, you're in scoring position. Second stolen base for Adrianza. Picked a great pitch to run on. Well, I got word that, and I'm not sure what this means exactly, that in the Cactus League, they've got some big ballparks. Only one home run was hit all spring with less than a 100 mile an hour exit speed. That hit by Mike Trout. Of course it's Mike Trout. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's new about that statement? So, so he hits a home run on a ball that leaves the bat less than 100 miles an hour. Is Mike Trout unique in doing so? What do you learn from that? I'd say if he hit the only home run less than 100 miles an hour, he's been a <laughs> class by himself. Yeah. <laughs> he probably did it left handed with a broken bat. Maybe so. Three and two the count. First base open. The pitcher waiting on deck. And there's ball four. So that breaking ball, Feldman and Castro making sure to pitch tough to the eight hitter. And now we'll face Chris Heston. Who, by the way, swings it well. But I wonder if Feldman here at the National League ballpark was being a little more careful with the eight hole hitter with that first base open, rather pitch to the pitcher. Unlike Madison Bumgarner, who we talked about last night with three home runs on the season after hitting four a year ago. Heston does not have a long ball, but he's driven in three, has nine hits and 41 at bats, a 220 batting average. So a respectable hitter. 
Madison Bumgarner. Well, he was great on the mound last night. Ball and a strike on the right hand hitter. That's the second inning here from San Francisco. Well, there's an example of Heston with the bat staying on the slider. Fighting off some good breaking pitches from Feldman. Staying right there. Career 214 hitter. Have you found a cloud today? Not in this vicinity. Pretty gorgeous day. Maybe just that dark one that's hanging around the Astros dugout. Oh, that <laughs> took off. You didn't see that leave earlier today? Well, I'm glad to see it leave. I don't want to see it anymore. I know those guys in the dugout don't want to see it anymore either. Trying to shake that thing off. Got him on the breaking ball. So Feldman keeps coming back to it. Gets the strike out of Heston. First punch out on the afternoon for Feldman. We remain scoreless after two. They name that Astro brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here are your clues for the day. He relearned his mechanics from current Astros pitching coach Brent Strom. He was a member of the State Sports Hall of Fame and his son is committed to his college alma mater. Tweet us your guesses. Let's see if you're right. I'll tell you later in the broadcast. Blummer, I, I know you didn't have your mechanics. Uh, Refixed by Brent Strom, so you know what he was. Uh, he was the, he was on the coaching staff in Double A when I was there. So how about that? He could have worked on my throwing mechanics. So maybe I should give him props for me and being able to throw the ball across the diamond. Maybe so. <laughs> Dwayne Kiefer, longtime broadcaster with the Giants, he and I were chatting about it. We played with Brent Strom back in the early mid 1970s, and neither one of us. <laughs> We're able to recall anything specific. <laughs> the only thing I recalled was playing tennis with Brent, and he played right handed to keep that left arm fresh as a daisy. Huh. Go to the third inning as Luis Valbuena leads it off. Bottom three in the order for the Astros Valbuena, Castro, and Feldman. Funny what you remember over the years. <laughs> it was back in the days when tennis suddenly became really hot. You couldn't find a tennis court anywhere. Strami took it out there right handed. He was amphibious. That he was. <laughs> ground ball hit to first. Belt is there. He'll go to the bag and out number one. And that's four ground ball outs now induced by Chris Heston. 
And again, one of the tops in the National League in that regard. One out for Jason Castro. Jason hitting 215. Just prior to and starting on this road trip, Jason was getting that bat heated up and hit the grand slam in game one of this road trip at Arlington. That grand slam got the Astros back into the ball game. Looked like they might have a shot. But since then, he has cooled off. And of course we've talked about it the only two grand slams for the Astros all season the team that's led the major leagues in home runs all year long have come in the last 10 11 days Hank Conger got it started and then Jason Castro quickly followed. Castro one for three against Heston. And he's kept it off the ground against Heston. A trio of balls hit in the air. And another one hit in the air. And it's pretty deep to left field. This one drifting back to the wall. Aoki uh, makes the play. And that ball just kept on carrying in that direction. Keiko's corner is ded a dedicated section for fans to show their support for the Astros ace every time he takes them out. You get a ticket, beer, and a Keiko's corner go beard or go home t-shirt for this Friday's game versus the Tigers. For more information, visit Astros.com slash Keiko's corner or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. And now Scott Feldman at the plate. One of those pitchers who swings from the other side. Always the cool thing to do. As an 0-2 count. A lot of run on that heater. Feldman nine major league hits in 57 official at bats. That's a 158 mark. See if Heston stays with that fastball. People checking in on the name that Astro didn't see the first one. Brad Lidge, Joaquin Andohar. The Rocket. I think I know I where I'd go with that guess. As the count goes to two and two now on Feldman. Heston has retired the first eight hitters he's faced. That first one that came up was Scott Casimir. And the strikeout on the heater. Second strikeout now picked up by Heston. Nine straight hitters retired by Chris Heston.
Houston Methodist, helps us get to know the guy on the mound, Scott Feldman, who lives in San Francisco. Grew up in the Bay Area, his favorite baseball player, Will the Thrill. Kauai was the best vacation he's ever taken, and the craziest job he's ever had as a Budweiser delivery boy. I bet he was pretty good at that. I actually got a chance to catch up with Scott before this start, talking about the team, uh, the state of mind these guys going in. Scott, with a lot of experience in the big leagues, has been on teams that have gone to the World Series, like the Texas Rangers, so he knows what these stretches are like, and he says, you're going to go through them. It's a long season. It's how you handle it. It's how you come out of it. Uh, it's, it's a good time to do it now than maybe later in the season, especially when and the other teams around us are kind of struggling as well. We have to pick it up, though, eventually. It's just going to be exciting to see how these young players react to this and, and what they can learn from it. Scott Feldman, a, a great guy to talk to, guys, and, and a good guy to have on the mound, a very even keel guy. Not, not ever showing a lot of emotion, Ash. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, that seems to be the case always. By the way, I noticed that that's really intriguing. Favorite vacation to Kauai. This is a guy that was born in Hawaii. First pitch a strike taken by Nori Aoki leadoff man for the Giants grounded out to shortstop in the first inning. I guess Scott Feldman knows what he likes. Oh and two on that good over the top curveball. Aoki Duffy and Posey for the Giants here in the third. Giants had a pair of base runners in the second inning. Single and a walk. They also had a stolen base in that frame. And by the way, the Giants can maybe take advantage in that stolen base category against Feldman. He's allowed now eight in ten tries on the season. Going back hard is Correa and bobbles and finally makes the catch. Right in front of Colby Rasmus. There's some athletic ability. He didn't bobble it. He tipped it to himself. It he was, knows what he's doing. He was juggling. Challenge yourself every once in a while. I didn't see a chainsaw in that juggling act. Good jump. He's got such a good drop step from that position to be able to create angles to keep his eye on that baseball. Great play. Right about there, you know the outfielder's coming on you, right? Yeah, you can feel them. That is for sure. Keep your eyes on the baseball. And the out eventually recorded. Matt Duffy at the plate also grounded to short in the first inning. Not your prototypical third baseman, but a guy who's played well. And these Giants, like the Astros, have been good defensively. Another peek at Carlos. Kind of hit a little deep in that pocket and popped out. See, Colby was ready to make a move on that ball. Ground ball to third on that sinker coming down and in. Lowry with the play. Two outs in the inning. And that'll bring up Buster Posey. Posey has one of the two hits for the Giants today. The other picked up by Brandon Belt. Three thirty three batting average. They're going to have a real good race in the National League as well as the American League for that matter for the batting title this year. Start of play today. Paul Goldschmidt at 337. Bryce Harper 333. And that's right where Buster Posey is now. There's that little cutter. Jeff Blum talking about maybe that being the pitch that has made a nice difference in the positive sense for Scott Feldman. In the American League, Prince Fielder leads by a point 327 to Jason Kipnis is 326 at the start of play. Watch out for Nelson Cruz and that triple crown. 324. He leads the league in home runs. In fact, the major leagues with 34. Nelson Cruz cooled down for a while, but he has gotten red hot again.
That's a really good hitter you're looking at. Lifetime 312 mark. Fly ball to center. This one easy for Rasmus. And that'll do it. A 1 2 3 third inning for Scott Feldman. Three scoreless innings and Carlos Correa. A little juggling act. to drive to the playoffs. Astros still leading despite all the struggles on the road. A game up on the Angels. Four and a half up on the Rangers. Both the Angels and Rangers losing last night. By the way, all home teams won yesterday around the major leagues. That wild card chase has the Blue Jays leading. And you know, for the moment, it would seem that the Blue Jays might have the advantage, might even go on by the Yankees in the American League East. Jose Altuve, five game hitting streak. Leads off the fourth inning, 0 for 1 as he struck out back in the first. Still right at 300. I think we already appreciate it, but a year like this makes you further appreciate what Altuve did last year, hitting 341. Two and one the count. If somebody's going to break the seal against Chris Heston, it's got to be this guy at the dish right here. Get things going for the Astros. That was a nice take right there. Just kind of quiet. Took that slider that bent low. Two hundred and twenty five hits a year ago. Fifty six RBI or stolen bases. As Altuve draws the walk, that's the first base runner that the Astros have had here on this afternoon. Let's see what happens when they get Chris Heston out of the stretch now with Altuve on first. Good eye by Altuve, a guy that doesn't like to walk. He likes to swing his way on. Preston Tucker at the plate. Hit it hard as he grounded out to short in the first inning. Giants shallow up in the infield a bit playing for two. This one a little looper down the left field side but coming on Aoki gets there easily and out number one. Carlos Correa coming to the dish. Hits by pitch type. He's getting a lot of fastballs and that doesn't mean he's getting hit. That means he's doing the hitting. 36 of those hits on fastballs. Change ups. 
We've seen it all. I and mean, we've seen a lot of pitchers trying to mix it up on him, trying to bust him in with some of those fastballs. You saw that home run he hit in Texas where he fought it off and was able to drive it out. But a kid learning his way through the big leagues and putting up some pretty good numbers because he's learned, learning pretty quickly. Well, if I was doing my guessing who the guy might be to snap this club out of what's been going on on the road. I'd look no further than Carlos Correa. Tough pitch a strike call. You know what's great too about Carlos Correa. He's one of the lucky ones. He has the talent that can overwhelm the game every once in a while too. Taken overs in two of his last three games. In fact, this road trip hasn't been overly kind to Carlos. He's had only one multi hit affair. That game one at Oakland, the Astros won it five to four. He went two for four in that game. He has a one two count. Altuve last night was caught trying to steal third base. Buster Posey easily gunned him down. 30 stolen bases, 11 caught stealing for Jose. Line shot to right field. Just like the Buster Posey hit in the first inning. And that's the one that can really get you going. Just stay on that baseball as Jeff talks about. Everybody in that Astros dugout can relax a little bit now, get that first knock out of the way. And again, a pitch that's kind of running in on the hands on that inner third, but the way he's able to just delay that barrel getting through and has strong enough hands to shoot that thing the other way. But we've seen it so often with Carlos Correa in two strike counts, really letting that ball get deep no matter where the pitch is or what type it is either. Jed Lowry at the dish. And another thing you've got to appreciate too, because I, I mean, we, we were rookies, we were younger guys, and we played on teams that have had tough stretches. Sometimes, as a young kid, you want to kind of announce your presence with authority and be the guy that breaks these things up a little bit, maybe overswing. But Correa just does a good job of being short and quick, getting that knock. Oh, and to the count on Lowry. Lowry with an 0 for 3 last night against Bumgarner, a couple of strikeouts. Out on the hands. It's an effective looking fastball. This velocity from Heston, not the kind that you look for from a guy that throws a no hitter. And right around that 89, 90 range today. Just away. By the way, in the no hitter by Heston, watching that fastball that he runs at the lefty and then breaks it back at the plate, he hit three batters in that game. That breaking ball, not that traditional over the top. 12 6 or but a good sweeper. And another thing Heston's had going for him. The Giants have scored a lot of runs for him when he has started. Third highest run support among National League pitchers. It's that lead runner. Astros trying to break through first today. Line drive and gloved at second. Diving stab by Adrianza. And alert 
base running by Altuve and Correa to get back. Well, just when you thought things were going to start going the Astros way, play like that happens on a ball smoked by Jed Lowry. Did a good job of staying back on that breaking ball. Just Adrianza makes a great play on it. So it's up to Colby Rasmus with two outs. And of course, again, it was Colby Rasmus that came through in huge fashion in game four at Oakland. An enormous three run home run that gave the Astros the lead. They would not hang on, but. For a brief amount of time, one of the huge moments for the team this year. Our TXU Energy Power player is Colby Rasmus. We were just talking about it, Ash. This is the one we thought was going to be the one that. Set the Astros on a tear because that was a big AB there in the top of the ninth inning. Couple runners on. Colby goes up in the zone, barrels it up. That put the Astros ahead. There was a lot of jubilation in that dugout for a very short time. That was the top of the ninth inning, and of course the A's came back. And in rather tough fashion for the Astros. I mean, obviously it's tough when you lose a ball game, but and things maybe don't start the way you typically would see. Going to the count on Colby Rasmus. He's in a spot to get another big hit for the Astros here. Two outs. Altuve and. Scoring position. Rasmus did not play in last night's game against the lefty. Two and two, good speed aboard Altuve and Correa. Feels like Colby's been around a long time. He's still just 29 years of age. Former first rounder by the Cardinals, that in 2005. It's actually a pretty good take. You've been with us the whole game. You know that upper part of the strike zone has not been getting called. Watch the catch by Posey. I like the way he just turns the outside of the glove in toward the strike zone. And now a 3 2 count. Runners will be on the move. And there they go. Colby just fouls it off on the ground. Now we do it again. Fourth inning, still a scoreless game. Again, Rasmus fouls it. Going to be real patient against guys that throw 88 to 90 miles an hour, relying on that run on their fastball. You got to be patient. Let that ball get to you because the second you try and go out and attack it before you see that run on that fastball, you either swing and miss or you do what Colby's doing right now, kind of nub it off the end of the bat. But it's tough. It's just unnatural to be a, try and wait that long to let that ball come to you. You want to get out there and mash that thing. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Especially as that left hand hitter. Runners go. Ball four. They're loaded up for Evan Gaddis. But Heston gave in right there trying to throw the change up. Because those weren't really good swings that Colby was taking against those fastballs. There's Bruce Bochy, former Astros catcher. 
Did we know at the time, former teammate of mine, that we were looking at a potentially future Hall of Fame manager? He's got to be in the Hall of Fame. Has to be, doesn't he? Man, three, yeah. Three World Series titles in the last five years. Ground ball to short. Crawford with the play on to second, and that'll do it. Force play, erasing Rasmus. The Astros leave three in the fourth inning. Three is presented by MD Anderson. Hunter Pence crushes a pair of three run homers in a 14 6 route of the Florida Marlins on August 12th of 2009. It was the second of three straight 25 home run seasons that Hunter would have for the Strohs. As he slammed away, Jeff Blum just kept running the bases out in front for Hunter Pence. It was just a table setter for guys like this that could mash. That first bomb he hit to right center field at uh, Joe Robbie is not an easy place to go. No. There were parts of that yard that were really tough to get to. It was Ricky Nolasco that took a beating that day. Hunter Pence leads it off, takes a strike. Too bad that Hunter Pence hasn't been blessed with that that gift of, of uh, just raw strength. For me this guy's work ethic has got to be unparalleled. He's amazing. Just a relentless cage rat also gets in the gym. Of course I've already got my tongue out of my cheek <laughs> after that comment. He's about as strong as they come right. Oh yeah no doubt. I had to ask him about his pants. He's the only guy in the big leagues I've seen wear his pants up over his knees like that. He looks like a punter. There's a good look at it. Most guys that wear those short pants will have it right below the kneecap. There is no good look at that. But uh, he doesn't wear a knee pad. He goes running around. He, he lives on scabs. Scar tissue around those knees. It's unbelievable to me. Because I remember he had issues when he played for the Houston Astros. Just scar That's the normal. High sock look. Of course, Carlos Correa does that properly also. But Hunter Pence made a little adaptation to it. Altuve with the play. First out of the fourth inning for the Giants. Brandon Belt comes to the plate. Who else homered in that game when Hunter Pence, as we just saw, hit a pair? I got me a little, you know. Stat patter at the end of that game, I think. You hit the long one in that game, right? Long enough. Well, I'm told here that Hunter Pence and 
Madison Bumgarner are the two strongest guys on the Giants team. I'm sure there would be some guys down there saying no way throw me on that list but. At least that's the list I have in front of me. Where do you find that list. I don't know. <laughs> you handed it to me. I did not. Fly ball to center field. Well, the Astros are going to finally get Brandon Belt. He flies out second out in the fourth inning, brings up Brandon Crawford. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV Premium. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Seems usually when you yeah, through the through the years I guess there were enough occasions where you come out for one of these games most of the guys acting like they didn't get enough sleep and suddenly there's double digit runs on the board from both clubs. Not so here today. Yeah, it's crazy how those games happen sometimes end of a road trip you probably shut down BP nobody took it today and just go out there and everybody's nice and relaxed ripping the ball around. Remember those days in the minor leagues you get off the bus lengthy trip after a night game just get right off the bus throw the uni on and play and get yourself about five hits. Well, I never did beautiful but liar. some of my friends did liar teammate, only, teammate buddies. Three. by the way Baumgartner word is on that list you gave me deadlift 600 pounds plus well how am I supposed to believe you when you're lying about me giving you that well just go with it okay one two three fourth inning two strikeouts for Scott Feldman we go to the fifth scoreless the Giants and Astros we're going to take a look at the Astros upcoming schedule presented by Progressive. We are done here in the Bay Area finally. Astros are going to fly home have that day off on Thursday another well timed day off before heading into that homestand regroup get things back together get some laundry done. Tigers in town for the weekend the Rays in during that midweek and then the Los Angeles Dodgers of San Gabriel Valley. We'll be in over that weekend. Before heading back out on the road, they've moved their home location, huh? Well, I just figured every team down there in Southern California is going to have nine different locations they're from. I don't know about every team, but those Angels have a few. That's the way you got to do it in the sun here, right? Yeah, they probably don't have a chance to break those lids out too often. Well, don't count on that. Luis Valbuena, the seven hitter, leads it off, takes a strike on the inside edge. Justin Maxwell now has taken over defensively in left field. See if we can find out what has gone on with Aoki. Well, he got 
hit in the head a couple days ago in Chicago. Fly ball to center, routine. Blanco, a couple of steps toward right center to make the play, and out number one. Just hope there's no lingering effects from that hit by pitch for Aoki. There's the bay, McCovey's Cove. You got a few out there, right? In BP, I didn't have a chance uh, to get one well enough during a game. Although I did get Jason Schmidt back in the day, right above that Levi's landing. Not that you remember things like that. Yeah, I even got one here right handed, too, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I liked playing here. You hit it out in the glove and left center? That yeah, was a little bit short. Drive down the left field side, slicing at the line, and goes foul. Castro flied out just shy of the wall in left field in the third inning. Well, he's got a good approach going right now with Heston. Talked about that. Left handers trying to let that ball that runs get a little bit deeper, let it travel a little bit longer. Right handers with that ball running on the hands might have to cheat a little bit, try and catch it out in front, keep it fair. Strike three is called. And the Giants eventually throw it around the infield. So Castro's down, second out, three strikeouts for Heston. Heston has allowed just one hit. Carlos Correa picked up a line drive to right field in the fourth inning. Almost like Greg Maddox at times with that running heater. It's a bold statement, Ash. See, so you preface it with almost and you can't get locked in at all. Scott Feldman was the second strikeout victim of the day. Now loops one down the left side. A base hit for Scott Feldman. Second Houston hit on the day. And speed aboard for Altuve. So you're telling me the almost Greg Maddox just gave up a hit to the other pitcher. Oh, Feldman dropping the head on that one. Watch this. This ball's crushed. There he goes. Let that ball travel and take that baseball. You are talking about tennis earlier. That's a pretty good drop shot right there. Just a little... Cut shot right over the net. Let yeah. it let it spin. Just let it sit right there. That means ten hits now in the career of Scott Feldman. As Altuve busts one to left field, back at the wall, and making a very nice catch, Justin Maxwell. And so when the Astros take their best shot, they come up still shy while they're on the road, and that'll do it for the Astros in the fifth. No runs a hit, they leave a man. Half a game, scoreless.
Join us for Legends Weekend presented by Houston Methodist this Friday and Saturday. Celebrate the 10th anniversary of the 2005 NLCS team with a special pregame ceremony, a 2005 NLCS t-shirt, and a commemorative World Series tumbler each to 10,000 fans. For more information, visit astros.com slash legendsweekend or call 1-877-9-ASTROS today. Astros wrapping up this long road trip in the Bay Area, and if we had more games here at AT&T Park, I would be on a kayak in McCovey Cove or just outside of right field here. Look at these guys. They're like sharks. They're waiting for a home run ball. They call them splash, hit, splash hits here at AT&T Park. There's been 68 hit by Giants players into the Cove, 35 of those by Barry Bonds. And if I hang out long enough and an Astro hits one out, maybe I'll jump out and get one. You've seen that happen, guys, haven't you? Yeah, we see you jumping in there all the time on Astros home runs. Nice going, Julia. She's a gamer. For the Giants here in the fifth inning in a scoreless game. Seven hitter Gregor Blanco. He leads it off and takes a strike. Two hits for the Giants. The Astros with a pair of hits. One of those by Scott Feldman. The other by Carlos Correa. Blanco flied to center in the second inning. This ball in the gap in left center field. Nobody's getting there. And Rasmus eventually picks it up. But not before Blanco has a stand up double. Puts a lot of pressure on your center fielder. Not that Evan Gannis isn't going to go out there and give it his best. He's just not your everyday left fielder out there. He's going to give it a shot. But I know a lot of the pressure is being put on center fielders in these National League ballparks to go get it. You can see right there. Kobe Rasmus, even though that ball way in left center field, was on his horse trying to get as close to that thing as he could. Unable to do it. Nobody out. Hey, Ray Adrian's at the plate. Switch hitter batting left handed. Tricky defense playing at third base. Did you find these challenging? We've got Lowry playing in, anticipating a possibility of a bunt, but needing to cover third on the possibility of a running game. Well, it was even harder because it's not a force play at third base. You've got to get position to be able to make the catch and the tag. So that made it extra tough. But at the same time, you've got to make sure you get an out in this situation. That's the toughest part. Because you got to know the range of your pitcher. If that ball is laid out in front of home plate, pitcher doesn't move well. You got to go attack that baseball and make sure you get that out. Ball and a strike. Scott Feldman sharp here this afternoon. And he has to be to keep the Astros in this game with Chris Heston pitching so well. Off speed. I think Bruce Bochy right now is giving the young man the opportunity to yank a ball, get on that right side of the infield, and move the base running to third base. Giants have laid down 31 sacrifice bunts. Keep in mind in the National League, pitchers go to the plate, and so the majority of those would be from the pitchers. And the reason he's not bunting is because that pitcher is hitting in this lineup. Ground ball to the right side. So the runner moves up 90 feet one out now for the pitcher Chris Heston and by the way only eight of those sacrifice bunts for the Giants from non pitchers. So the leadoff double has the Giants with that man at third one out for Heston. We mentioned that Heston swings the bat well. But you still have that threat of the squeeze. Valbuena draws in, infield in all the way around. Speed breaking ball. Heston struck out in the second. Yeah. 
and got him right back to that breaking ball. Second time Heston goes down on strikes and now Feldman has two outs with the man at third. Leadoff man Justin Maxwell at the plate. Good job by Feldman. Needed that punch out. Talked about Chris Heston. There's no slouch at the plate. Does a good job of handling the bat, but Feldman, you could feel there was a little more emphasis on that breaking ball to get that punch out. Infield goes back. Feldman continues from the stretch. Line to center, Rasmus stocks it and makes the play. And that'll do it. That strikeout of Heston huge in the inning as we remain scoreless in San Francisco at after five. Tickets, tickets are free for the Rays versus Astros game on August 17th or the 20th. Bring your family to Minute Maid Park and get up to two free kids tickets with the purchase of one adult ticket and select seats. For more information, visit astros.com slash kids free or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Carlos Gomez has the day off today. Sore and swollen knee. He should be fine, but it came when he made this catch crashing into the center field wall. Robbing that Duffy in the first. So stayed in the play. You can see him really excited there. Told me adrenaline rush. He saw he had the ball. Very, very excited. Took a couple steps and realized maybe I don't feel so well. <laughs> Even felt a little dizzy, guys. But the knee uh, bothered him a little bit today. So just took the day off with addition to the day off tomorrow. He should be good to go back in that lineup in a couple days. Man meets Wall, and Wall usually wins. Thanks a lot, Julia. Preston Tucker leads off in the sixth inning as a 2 0 count. By the way, Scott Feldman over the last three innings, very sharp, 34 pitches, 26 of those for strikes. Tucker sees Heston find the inside corner. Yeah, that pitch is coming in there at 86 miles an hour. By the way, Blummer, we were talking about Bruce Bochy and the three World Series wins over the last five years. No manager with three World Series titles is not in Cooperstown outside of Bruce Bochy right now. Just a matter of time. Lead off walk to Preston Tucker. Of course, we met with Boach yesterday and kind of joked around about it with him. And he just shucks it off <laughs> like it. Nah, I've got no business even being in that conversation. No, he's a pretty humble guy. Loves the game too. So the Astros have the leadoff man aboard Preston Tucker. Carlos Correa one for two comes to the plate. Yes, yeah, so I think in. Uh, I don't know how far out in the future, but we're going to be talking about Bruce Bochy as Hall of Fame manager Bruce Bochy.
I would imagine that'd be a pretty good turnout. A lot of Padre fans, a lot of Giants fans, a lot of players. I love playing for them. Oh, and to the count now on Correa. With that base hit in the fourth inning, Correa hitting 284. Fourteen home runs already for Correa. Three hits for the Giants, two for the Astros. And a two two count. Well, you could try everything you want as a manager. When your team is struggling, I don't know how you pull them out. I think AJ's doing a good job of keeping that kind of like that calm demeanor going. Not because the second you start losing ball games, as a player, you know you're getting frustrated. AJ's played long enough to realize that players are going to get frustrated, start to panic a little bit. But when you're panicking as a player and you see your manager start to freak out, or say things in the media that maybe you're kind of can, can re read between the lines on. That just leads to even worse situations. I think he's done a good job of trying to keep it even keel and keep these guys positive and motivating them. Tucker on the move. Strike three called the throw down. And Tucker thought it was ball four. And it's going to be a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Correa can't believe it. Tucker makes a very big mistake as a base runner, I would say. Well, you got to keep running. You got to finish the play as a base runner. But we have not seen a high strike called all day long from the home plate umpire, Mike Estabrook. And yes, it is going to show up as a strike. But again, I don't think we've seen a pitch up in that region called on either team until just now. But Preston Tucker, you cannot assume ball four. You have got to keep running through that bag. There's some of the youth right there showing up. Four strikeouts now for Heston. And he's going to get out of the sixth inning facing just three hitters despite the leadoff walk. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Alcatraz. 
I think that's where all those hits are locked up. Got to go get the key, break in. Go all Nicholas Cage on it. Now, is that the original Foghorn from Candlestick that moved over? Nice, it is. Play that on home runs for the Giants. Keep it silent. Matt Duffy at the plate, the two hitter, is grounded out twice. It's about the only thing he wanted to bring over here from Candlestick, I think. Matt Duffy mentioned last time he was at the plate, not your prototypical third baseman, drafted originally as a shortstop. And didn't learn third base until he got to the big leagues. Well spotted strike on a 2 0. What a costly play that double play strike him out throw him out was with Tucker on the move Correa at the plate. That ground ball is through the left side Matt Duffy with a leadoff single. And for the Giants, their fourth hit of the day. That brings up the three hitter Buster Posey. Posey has singled and flied out. Right in the heart of the Giants' order now in the sixth inning. And you have to keep in mind that Feldman has been somewhat easy to run on. Matt Duffy is five for five in stolen base attempts. It's fouled off. One more I'm watching Hunter Pence in the on deck circle, and he said some unique. Practice swings through the years. Looks like he's altered things a bit, but still highly funky. Whatever works. Ain't broke, don't fix it. Now swing it just like that, young man, and everything's going to be great. You know where you start causing some pain is trying to replicate that swing if you're not Hunter Pence. Imagine kids in the area trying to swing like that in the on deck circle. Nobody out. Plenty of theories out there about hitting, but I guess I'd love to hear the theory that leads to that practice swing. Clearly, Feldman thinking about Duffy. Foul. The Astros got to 14 games over 500 as they start play today. 61 and 53. Eight games over the mark. Still 0 and 2 on Buster Posey. Ground ball hit to second. Altuve. On to Correa. Valbuena. And the double play. The Astros turn their first of the afternoon. And just like that, the base is empty. Two outs for Hunter Pence. Much needed ground ball. Alignment perfect. Right at Altuve. Easy flip. Strong arm of Carlos Correa gets that second out. Four six three on the double play. Hunter Pence with that half swing takes a strike.
Ball and a strike on Pence. He's flied out and grounded out. It was August 2nd, the most recent time the Astros got to 14 games over. They've had a 10 game winning streak this year. They've lost as many as seven in a row. And they've spent 97 days in first place. Strike call. Tough spot that fills it on Pence. Good grief. Where do you think they're trying to get Hunter Pence out? Down and away? Got a little extra on that one. Slider got him. Big double play in the inning. The strike out of Pence to end it. And Feldman faces just three, six innings without a run. Time to name that Astro, brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here are your clues we gave you earlier in the game. It's going to be Shane Reynolds, who's a member of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. His son Ryan's committed to the University of Texas, and he was playing winter ball in Venezuela when Tucson Toro's pitching coach, Brent Strom, taught him new mechanics and a split finger. I actually chatted with Stromy about this today, and taking Stromy back, he, he remembered a great Hard worker, uh, talked so highly of Shane Reynolds and the time that they shared together back in 96. He was with the Astros and, and saw him come up. He didn't imagine his career taking off the way he did, guys, uh, with, with the 12 years in the majors. But it was really happy for him and later that things worked out for him. I think he told me his fastballs were on 87 at the time when Stromy started working for him. That split finger changing everything. Stromy's worked magic with a lot of people. Thanks, Julia. For the Astros, Colby Rasmus leads off the seventh inning and hits one high and deep to right field. Back at the wall. Watch it. See ya. Colby Rasmus launches one. And it is out in McCovey Cove and a 1-0 Houston lead. Colby getting in on the action. Jumped him. Just one. You hope that's a start. But how about Colby Rasmus having some big hits on this road trip, putting the Astros ahead? A little more tempered celebration, knowing they still got some work to do. The Rasmus launches one to right. First run of the ball game. And for Colby, his 15th. 
have the long ball working here in the Bay Area. Giants have a left-hander, Josh, Josh rather, Osich throwing in their pen as Evan Gaddis stands in. 42 RBIs for Rasmus. Tell you what, I've been real pleased with Rasmus on this team. Been fun to watch, doing a great job chasing down a lot of fly balls in the outfield. But then those big hits here of late. Yeah, we were talking about the numbers, speed of ball off the bat on that home run, 107 miles an hour. There you go. Still a home run to me. Yeah, but now you got the exit velocity to yeah. prove it. There you go. Gaddis takes a strike. Three and two. Left hander Oliver Perez gets loose for the Astros down the right side. Fly ball to center. Blanco just a step or so in. At number one in the seventh inning. Missed that spot. Colby Rasmus does a good job of not missing it. That's what every hitting coach around the league is going to say. You get a pitch to hit, you better not miss it because things go downhill after that. Colby hasn't missed him here of late. Nice piece of hitting, launching that off. Walk way out there and into McCovey Cove. That's 157 home runs for the major league leading team. The hitting has not been plentiful recently. But they still live and die by the long ball. Obi Rasmus starting to assemble some pretty good numbers on his career. 131 home runs now. As Valbuena draws the one out walk. He's aboard for Jason Castro. And Bruce Bochy, the skipper, coming out for the Giants. He's pointed to the bullpen. He'll bring on the left-hander Josh Osich. With the Astros in front here in the seventh inning. one nothing and a runner aboard. The only run of the ball game coming on the leadoff home run in the inning by Colby Rasmus. And that does it for Heston.
on. Time now for our AT&T call to the bullpen. Bruce Bochy has gone down there and gotten left-hander Josh Osich. Get a chance to look at his numbers on the season. Only his 11th appearance. And we have ERA under one. Doing a good job with fastball cutter, changeup combo. Now keep in mind, he can throw the ball about 94, 96 miles an hour. One out here in the seventh inning. The Rasmus home run, the only run of the afternoon. Jason Castro at the plate against the very hard throwing lefty. 96 to 98 miles an hour on the heater at times. And he starts it with a slider. Right hander George Contos throwing in the pen for the Giants. As Oliver Perez continues for Houston. Two pitches in, Castro has not seen the fastball. Ball and two strikes on Castro. And two and two. And the two two. So that'll fill it to the Astros with a lead now dare put Valbuena in motion. It's a tough matchup for me to put Valbuena in motion. Left on left. I've already run into one double play and a double play right here would end this inning. Got Carlos Gomez on deck. Might be the first fastball we've seen 95 miles an hour. Well, he had a couple in there, 96 down in the zone. He got it down there. Carlos Gomez has a bat waiting on deck in the Scott Feldman spot in the order. A little bit of a cutter. Scott Feldman's got to feel really good about his effort today. It's back to back outings. He's pitched extremely well. Got nothing to show for it that last time out in Oakland. Gave up two earned runs in six innings. Ten out of his last 15 starts have been quality. And away. So Castro draws the walk back to back three passes. Still one out and now the nine spot. And Carlos Gomez has been announced. Go back to that home run in Oakland. Colby's been swinging a good bat here of late. Getting big hits too. Two runners on right here and he launched it. During that day game in Oakland. Put the Astros ahead. Have to see a couple more runs now being put up. But also here in San Francisco. Colby Rasmus with a big hit. Get the Astros on the board, giving them a one nothing lead. Taking advantage of those mistakes. You get them, you got to hit them, and he has lately. So as the Giants go to the bullpen once again, the Astros on top one nothing. We'll be right back in San Francisco.
Francisco. Kick off your weekends at Minute Maid Park with the best Friday night fireworks show in town, presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. The next fireworks show is this Friday when the Astros take on the Tigers. For more information, visit astros.com slash fireworks or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Right-hander George Contos comes on now for the Giants. Pitcher number three, given up runs in two of his last five appearances. He had stranded the first 27 runners that were on for him this season. But now recently allowing five inherited runners to score in five of his last seven outings. 41,967 on hand, another sellout, number 382 in a row for these Giants. Contos will bring a little bit of everything at you. Fastball, slider, cut fastball, curveball, and a changeup. Hit to right field. To his left, Pence to make the play. Tagging and bluffing from second base is Luis Valbuena. That's two outs. And now back to the top with Jose Altuve. Giants now have left-hander Jeremy Affel throwing in their pen. Altuve 0 for 2. He's drawn a walk. Squibbed right off the end of the bat. Good pitch starting off Altuve with the off speed. He is an aggressive hitter. Feldman had himself a great day. But we know Altuve can be very aggressive. Likes the fastball early. Good job by Contos to get him to chase with that slider early. Two now on Jose. Two is just going to go into battle mode now. We've seen him force the issues on the bases. Getting thrown out last night trying to steal third. Put the pressure on the Oakland defense. That worked out when he scored at home plate on Correa's double. So he understands the position he's in right now. Late in the ball game, two strikes. RBI situation. Hitting 256 with runners in scoring position and two outs. He's had three multi hit games in the five game streak. Lays off. They ask for the appeal. It's palms down down at first. And Hickox with the call. Jose two for four in last night's game. But had that big caught stealing. Good eye. Good eye. Not often that Altuve's taken a pitch close with a couple of strikes. Two and two the count. Two runners aboard, two outs in the seventh. And now full count. 
So Valbuena from second, Castro from first will be on the move. Runners go. Ground ball to short. Crawford. Guns to get him. And that'll do it for the Astros in the seventh inning. But they finally put a run on the board. Colby Rasmus. It's number 15. It's 1-0 Houston. The Astros on Saturday, August 22nd for the Biggio Hall of Fame pregame celebration. Craig Biggio will be addressing fans at Minute Maid Park prior to the Dodgers-Astros game, and 10,000 fans will receive a Biggio Hall of Fame t-shirt presented by Coca-Cola. For more information, visit astros.com slash Biggio H-O-F or call 1-877-9-ASTROS today. We'll get a look at some of the guys in the bullpen now with Scott Feldman's day being done and a little bit different dynamic here at AT&T Park as they forgot to put bull, bullpens in when they built this park. So the relievers actually hang out in the dugout, which is different if you don't play here very often. A uh, relievers actually catching some of A.J. Hinch's conversations with Brent Strom, something they never hear when they're out in the bullpen. So when they catch wind of something that maybe the managers thinking they, they start to, to think themselves about about situations and maybe getting up and getting loose so it's it's just a little bit of a challenge something they're not used to and then of course uh, when they do get ready have to drop their jackets off underneath before heading out and sprinting out sometimes if they need to get hot fast it's it's different but uh, the guys are or they're adapting and adjusting to the different ballpark guys thanks a lot Julia and adapting well as will Harris as he gets loose also Oliver Perez who now works in the seventh inning also a couple of changes defensively Jake Marisnik has come on to play right field Preston Tucker moves on to left field as Evan Gaddis is no longer in the ball game. Brandon Belt who hit the two home runs last night as the count at 0 and 2 as he leads off the seventh for San Francisco to be followed by Brandon Crawford and Gregor Blanco. Perez 33 years of age. And gets a strikeout on the first man he faces. And that's a big one getting Brandon Belt. 
Josh Feldman today. We were talking about how well he threw, but what a special day shutting down the Giants through six. No, he did a fantastic job. Just can't say enough. It's good to see Scott Feldman getting his strength back. Remember, he went on the DL coming back, probably getting his legs back under him, that arm getting back in shape. And you can tell the velocity up, pitching around 91, 92 miles an hour, but that nice cutter that you see right there, almost borderline slider. Has been doing him good. Six innings strong, only four hits given up, no earned runs. Got the one double play behind him, started by Altuve. And now it's in the hands of the bullpen. I gotta be honest, I didn't realize that Oliver Perez had that much velocity left in that arm. Hitting 94 on that. What would you call that delivery there? It's the uh, left handed Louis Tion, isn't it? Didn't they actually, actually throw the spin in there, but I guess so. Had the delay move. There we got Louis. And a strike call. It's one and two. Normally you see guys trying to twist and turn like that that don't have the velocity, but along with the funk, Perez is bringing the heat. Sweeps the slider. Two and two the count. Perez has been around a long time, 13 years in the major leagues now. 67 and 80 lifetime. Pretty good job laying off that pitch. See that front hip of Crawford kind of leaking out a little bit like he wanted to offer, but the hands held off. El Tiante brings the heater, it's fouled back. Perez has some numbers that are rather impressive. He's allowed over his career just over eight hits per nine innings. Walks have been his enemy, though. Drive down the right side. That's off the wall. Extra bases. Brandon Crawford into second base. He'll hold there. A one out double, and that ball was raked. Talk about Brandon Crawford laying off a couple of sliders to get himself into this 3 2 count. When you know a guy like Oliver Perez is going to be bringing the heater, big league hitters should be able to turn on 94. But look at the location on this. Kept it inside. Bell, all he has to do is drop the head on it and turns on it. Pretty good power hack, and you can see why he has 19 home runs. Well, that's just a good thing that was a line drive as opposed to an elevated. Fly ball because I'm sure the exit velocity was pretty good. Yeah, he gets under that a bit, and Julia's out there in the bay trying to find the baseball. I thought Julia was supposed to get Colby Rasmus's home run. Who cares about the Giants? She had left just in time for that one. Another left handed bat. Blanco takes the slider for a strike. Fans here not liking that high strike. Twenty four doubles for Brandon Crawford. By ball to left field. Tucker over there now battling that son to make the play two down in the inning. And the second baseman a Ray Adrianza will stand in switch hitter. Turns around and bats right handed. Mentioned earlier that Will Harris is throwing in the pen for Houston. And A.J. Hinch out there. 
is going to go to the bullpen. It will be Will Harris. As Oliver Perez gives up a double but gets a couple of outs. We will be right back with the Astros on top. Seventh inning, Brandon Crawford at second base with the switch hitter, A. Ray Adrianza at the plate. Will Harris's numbers on the season had a rough outing last time he was out there in Oakland. Gave up two hits, two earned runs, and a walk. He's it all in about 10 pitches, so. Good time to turn things around right here and get his Astros back in that dugout. See if they can tack on a couple more runs. Still just 29 hits allowed in 49 and a third innings on the year. Starts him with the curveball. The whip at point nine one. Little jam shot ground ball to second base Altuve and that'll do it for the Giants in the seventh inning Harris comes on gets the final out of the frame two seven one nothing Houston. When the Giants Dodgers rivalry took an ugly turn as Juan Marshall, the great right hander, hit John Roseboro twice on the head with his bat. 
and it's cited. As you might imagine, a brawl that went on for 14 minutes. Marshall was suspended and forbidden from the Giants final series at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers would win the National League pennant that year, and they do it by two games over these Giants. Marshall ejected from the game, suspended eight days, fined seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. In those days, that would have been large coin. It's about fifteen thousand, I think, these days, which is pretty good. But how about number one, Marshall going out there with a bat? Do you see the guy on deck? He did the same thing. He came out from the side of the pitcher with a bat in his hands. You kidding me? Tell me that rivalry doesn't exist. Tell me in your days. <laughs> If you ever took a bat toward the field oh, man. with the intent of swinging it or just going after somebody, I mean, you would have been, been blackballed oh. for life in this game. Big time. Preston Tucker leads off in the eighth inning. A 1 0 Houston lead. Colby Rasmus at it again. Home run to right field, leading off the seventh inning, his 15th of the year. Tucker's 0 for 2 has drawn a walk but following that leadoff walk in the sixth inning wound up getting caught stealing on a play that certainly didn't look good. 3 2 count on Carlos Correa they had Tucker in motion Correa took strike three and then Tucker for whatever reason almost stopped or did stop on his way to second base got tagged out easily for the double play. Well, hard to figure out how a play like that happens. One and two now on Preston. Yeah, I was a little surprised by that too. Maybe one of those lessons that you learn now and it never happens again. Hopefully. By the way, in that Marshall game with Johnny Roseboro, it was Sandy Koufax on the hill for the Dodgers. Now, that was a pretty good matchup. <laughs> Dodgers leading the National League West, the Giants. Trying to make some noise. Giants two and a half back of LA. Broken bad liner that'll drop in right field. Preston Tucker has his first hit of the day. One for three. And now Carlos Correa comes to the plate. Yeah, keep an eye on this replay. All the action down there. Who's this guy? Come on. Tito Fuentes is oh like, my. I'm going to take my stick out there and see if I can get in on, on the action. Looked like he held up only because he wasn't sure which player he was going to hit. Oh. Unbelievable. Was, how about number 12 bringing in his bat, too? There's some shrapnel lying around that fight. Come on. There's Tito. How about it? Still a switch hitter. Davenport was at number 12 coming off the bench. Maybe they just went to the bat rack and started pulling out some. It was like uh, the anchor man fight. Left hander Javier Lopez now loosening in the Giants pen. And those two teams, the Dodgers and Giants, have gone at it an awful lot in the, the National League West. Those days back then, the days of Willie Mays and Willie McCovey. There's Juan Marshall, great giant. It's a little more intense back in those days. They didn't have ALDSs, ALCS, NLCS. There, you had to win that thing outright. You went straight to the World Series. Eighteen divisions, or rather leagues.
Oh, and two on Correa. That's a good swing. Yeah, I'd love to know the follow up on was Tito Fuentes find anything at all for going out there with this bat like that. So you'd have to imagine I don't think they had the luxury of instant replay. Go back to the eight millimeter. I don't think they had super <laughs> eight in those days. Ball gets by just a little bit from the catcher Posey. Not enough for Tucker to move up. In Seattle. And a little something special going on. Mariners lead the Orioles 3 0. They're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Brown ball hit to short. 6 4 and 3. And the second double play turned by these San Francisco Giants today. The other strike him out, throw him out. And two outs, bases empty now as Jed Lowry will come to the plate. But he's Sashi Iwakuma, eight innings of no hit ball for Seattle today. Here's your National League playoff picture. You know, Central, just like the American League Central, one of the biggest leads in that playoff picture, but the Dodgers battling with the Giants. It's amazing the Giants are still that close after getting swept in Chicago. Put that in on a lease between the Nationals and the Mets. That'll be a good one down the stretch, too. Based purely on record, it would seem like the Cardinals are the team that would have the advantage going into postseason play. They've been great this year. In that no hit bid by Iwakuma for Seattle. Eight innings, three walks, seven strikeouts. He's at 107 pitches. And that against a tough Baltimore lineup. Padres trailing the Reds 5 3 in the eighth inning. Philadelphia leading the Diamondbacks 7 4 in the sixth. Sixth inning in Miami. Marlins topping the Red Sox 5 to 4. Jed Lowry stays alive. It's 1 and 2. David Ortiz, big poppy, has slam number 24. You and I both love the Red Sox shortstop, Xander Bogarts. He's hitting 315 now. Yeah, I like what he was doing. A ton of RBIs too, didn't he? Doing a good job of hitting with runners in scoring position. Plays a great shortstop. Him and Mookie Betts they had themselves a pretty good series last time the Astros were out there. Fifty-four RBIs for Bogarts. He could take a run at that American League batting title. Yeah. 
Lowry now with a 3 2 count. Colby Rasmus waits on deck. Crowd here in San Francisco getting behind Pontos. Lowry again fouls it. Lowry impresses me with his at bats. Having the ability to watch him on, well, for most of the season. I know he's been injured, but the at bats that we've seen from Jed Lowry have been pretty impressive to me. He'll get in some of these 0 2 counts, battle back to 3 2, fight some pitches off, but he's just never fearful to be in that two strike count. Appreciate the work he does against some of these pitchers here in the big leagues. In the air, deep to right field, back at the wall. This one is out of here. Jed Lowry has his fifth on the year, and that doubles the Houston lead 2 0 now in the eighth inning. Big hit. Another home run for the Houston Astros. That percentage of Run score on this road trip continue to go up. I believe that's Lowry's first home run since coming back from the DL. That's a good sign, but again, battles, gets a tough pitch, pulls the hands in and turns on it. Bruce Bochy's coming out. He's going to do a double switch. Always the tip off when the manager goes straight to the home plate umpire initially. So he'll go to the bullpen. He'll bring on left hander Jeremy Affelt. Second baseman A. Ray Adrianza made the final out of the previous inning. Iwakuma now has picked up the no hitter for Seattle as we watch the home run by Jed Lowry. Good piece of hitting. You see him bring his hands towards that belly button and then just turn on it right here. And he got this ball pretty good. You're going to see it hits the top of the awning right there and then jumps out of here. But just a credit to Jed Lowry fighting off some tough pitches over the third base dugout and then turns on that one for another big run for the Astros. Astros now on top two to nothing two solo home runs Colby Rasmus and Jed Lowry were two outs in the top of the eighth inning as Rasmus comes to the plate once again and he'll face the left hander Jeremy Affelt fourth pitcher of the day for the San Francisco Giants. Make that. Left hander Javi Lopez loosening in the pen for the Giants. No, nope. sorry, Ash. Javier Lopez is in the game. Ah, excuse me. They brought on Javi Lopez. My bad.
Breaking ball skips on by the catcher Posey. One and two the count. And caught looking is Colby Rasmus. That'll do it for the Astros in the eighth inning. Where they get the big home run on the or the run rather on the home run by Jed Lowry. 2-0 Houston. For the Whataburger Water Plays. And we're looking at Carlos Correa and some of the gems he's made. Jake Marisnik. Will be Rasmus with one of those. We were talking about the great defense the Astros have put up. This Castro has been throwing extremely well as a catcher. And then here in the series, Carlos Gomez in center field crashing up against the wall. Oh, the new addition getting in on the action, too, throwing his body out there. And now Pat Neshek on to work the eighth inning, facing the nine, one, and two spots. Kelby Tomlinson came on part of that double switch for the Giants. Bat goes flying. Tomlinson hitting two seventy three. Boy, how the Astros would love to get out of town with a split with these Giants. Tomlinson, just a rookie, had hits in his first three at bats in the big leagues since he's gone 0 for 8. And the slider gets him. Out number one in the eighth inning. Carlos Correa had an intriguing play today. Been all over the place, showing range. They're even going back up over his shoulder right there. How about being Colby Rasmus and watching a guy the size of Carlos Correa coming at you? You're going to give way a little bit, aren't you, and let him make that play? One out for the leadoff spot. Justin Maxwell came on after Nor Nori Aoki left with dizziness. Forty ninth game now for Nishek. Has that one save along the way. 
And he simply has not walked many folks this year. Pretty interesting story on how he started throwing with that motion you see now. He got hit. He was a shortstop coming up, got hit in the right wrist, broke it. Another strikeout back to back Tomlinson and Maxwell two outs for the third baseman Matt Duffy. Broke that arm and uh, never really set right. So in his return to playing baseball he was having a tough time throwing over the top. So what he created what, what he found out is throwing from this position didn't hurt his wrist didn't hurt his arm. There you can see it's unnatural but for Pat Neshek it's natural and it's effective too. Duffy's one for three on the day. That whole that no hitter rather for Hisashi Iwakuma for Seattle. Three walks, seven strikeouts, 116 pitches. The fourth no hitter of the Major League Baseball season. Drive to left center field. Rasmus on the move and makes the running ground. A one, two, three, eighth inning for Nisha. To the ninth we go, 2 0 Houston. And we were talking about that no hitter turned in by Iwakuma of the Seattle Mariners. Fourth no hitter thrown on the season around the bigs. Looks like his velocity is starting to ramp up a little bit too. Man, he's always had such good sync on that fastball. Got a slider to back it up. Congratulations to Iwakuma. Not an easy team to do it against either in Baltimore, who's trying to make a run at that AL East. 25,661, the official attendance in Seattle for that one. Marwin Gonzalez will pinch hit here to start the ninth inning for Houston. As you see that celebration in Seattle. One of the great feelings in this game. So Marwin pinch hits as Sergio Romo loosens in the Giants pen. Ball back to the mound. One hopper handled easily by Lopez, and out number one in the ninth. And now Chris Carter will pinch hit for Luis Valbuena. That was the pitcher spot that Marwin pinch hit for.
Carter hitting 181. Mentioned that, that no hitter by Iwakuma, fourth of the year in the bigs. Chris Heston, who started today for the Giants, had the first one. Max Scherzer followed. Cole Hamels recently. And now Iwakuma. Luke Gregerson gets it loose in the Astros pen. Of solo home runs have been all the scoring. Seventh inning leadoff job by Colby Rasmus, his 15th. And then the following inning with two outs, Jed Lowry hit one to right field. Half swing, and the appeal brings Palms down. One for three last night. Base hit RBI. Got himself a 3 2 count right now. Hopefully, get that fastball. Draws the pinch hit walk here in the ninth. Comes with one out and brings up Jason Castro. The Angels will be in Chicago against the White Sox this evening. Andrew Heaney goes five and one for the Halos against John Dank, six and nine for the Sox. Texas Rangers once again against the Twins in Minneapolis. That game this evening. Nick Martinez against Mike Pelfrey. Giants have turned a couple of double plays this afternoon. One on a strikeout, throw him out. Jake Marisnik waiting on deck. Two balls and a strike on Castro. Pretty good looking pitch, three and one. And there's Jake. Came on as a defensive replacement. Strike is called, and that'll fill it. About that grouping. Three and two, one out. Chris Carter has run a couple of times this year, once successfully. Lopez isn't exactly quick to home plate. Let him go. And Castro down on strikes. Not happy as he leaves the dish. That's going to bring out the skip again. Bruce Bochy comes out. And he'll turn to the right-hander Sergio Romo as he has two outs and Jake Marisnik coming to the plate. So the Giants make the change. Astros lead it two to nothing.
presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. And by Orkin, pest control, down to a science. Sergio Romo comes on to work now for the Giants. 32-year-old right-hander. Fastball slider changeup. Fastball's around 88. Got good run, good sink on it. Does a good job of changing speeds, keeping those hitters off balance, able to hit both sides of the plate with all of his pitches. Got a bit of a frisbee there. Heston, Osic, Contos, Lopez, and Romo now for the Giants on the mound. It's been Feldman, Oliver Perez, Will Harris, and Pat Neshek for the Astros. 0 oh 2. Unusual slider for Romo. They call it here a no dot slider. First plate appearance on the afternoon for Jake. There goes Carter. Throw down, and they got him easily. Throw another cut, stealing, as Buster Posey has made it look really easy this year. To the bottom of the ninth, we go 2 0 Houston. Out all the action from today's game, plus interviews from the clubhouse, and much more on the Astros post-game show presented by Houston Methodist. The Astros trying to protect, protect a two-nothing lead. They bring on Luke Gregerson to work the ninth inning. 45th game on the year for Luke. 22 saves and 27 opportunities. And he's done a lot of work on his career against the Giants. 50 games and a 1 and 4 mark with a 217 ERA. Marwin Gonzalez has picked up some leather. He's at first base defensively. It's 3 4 5 for the Giants coming up. Buster Posey one for three on the day. Had a first inning single. In the sixth inning grounded into a double play and he takes a strike. Gregerson pitcher number five for the Astros.
This is a team Gregerson knows a lot about. Pitching with the San Diego Padres for a couple of years, facing these Giants both here and at Petco. Don't see that kind of swing from Posey very often. Just saw Dallas Keuchel. Tomorrow's an off day then. Friday night, Dallas Keuchel goes against Alfredo Simon of the Tigers as the Astros and Detroit open up that three game series, part of a 10 game homestand. Tampa Bay comes in for four and the Dodgers for three. It'll be Keuchel, McHugh, and Fires in those three games against the Tigers for Houston. That's a professional hitter staying alive. No, that was a good pitch. I was actually curious to see if he was going to come back with that fastball because the two previous sliders, he got a bad swing from Buster to another slider in the same spot. Buster lays off it. So I was kind of wondering if he was going to try and take that chance, sink that fastball down in because he had him leaning out over that plate. But at 88, able to get Buster to give that emergency hack right there. Ground ball right side. Marlin will take it to the bag, wins the spread, and out number one. I'm really glad that Marlin was over there at first base right there because Gregerson didn't immediately bust it off the mound. Watch Gregerson. Kind of stands there, hesitates, and then has to turn it up a notch, realizing that Marlon Gonzalez is playing a little bit further towards that four hole. But Marlon, a pretty good athlete, quick feet, gets that big first out of the inning. Well, that would have been a mistake that would have been tough to swallow. Got to pick each other up. Hunter Pence at the plate now, 0 for 3. Seven strikeouts for the Astros staff. <laughs> Left hand hitting Brandon Belt waits on deck. I always hate to say you need a win. Must game. But almost feels that way for the Astros. Little delayed call. It's one and two now on Pence. The pitch. Mike Estabrook calling the balls and strikes. And the slider puts him away. One out away. Luke Gregerson will face the left hand hitting power hitter Brandon Belt. There's nothing easy about being a reliever, period, because your outings are so limited. And then you got to have a short term memory like Luke Gregerson getting another opportunity in that closer's role. Done a great job all year, kind of sputtering here of late. But how about the composure to come out here and get two outs in this ninth inning with some really good pitching and really good location on both the fastball and the slider? Ain't done yet. One big one to get. Drive to left center field on the move. Rasmus. He gets there and makes the play. And a one, two, three, ninth inning as Luke Gregerson pulls off the save, his 23rd on the year. And the Astros win their second on this nine game road trip. They do it in two hours and 54 minutes. And that's a big win for the ball club to get to 62 and 53 back to nine games over 500 as they will go to sleep once again in first place in the American League West.